Guys, welcome back to RBR. I've already got a helmet here because I've had a good run in this GT63 Pro. And I wanted to start this video off with a launch control because the standard car is so impressive in putting power down. Let's see what it manages on launch to start this video off. Here we go. You ready? There we go. Great, 0 to 60 time, three seconds, dead. But it's not the speed that impresses me about the Pro. It's actually how this car, because of these little changes like we saw in the GTR Pro, it's how it's highlighted how this more daily version of the GT in this new generation is still a car that you can very much viably use on track. Already in the first 100 yards, you feel that the front end is keener to point in. And there's a ton of things that have been changed. I'm gonna tell you about all of them. We're gonna talk about the specs available as well, and then go for a proper angry drive later in the video. So let's talk today about this GT63 Pro. So guys, this is the GT63 Pro. We've had Pro before in AMG's GTR, but that was a really uncompromising track car with a single suspension option, loads of aero and carbon, etc. no power bump, which is not really what this car is. Now this Pro, very different to the previous Pro, in that it maintains the daily usability of the standard GT63. We still have the rear seats available. We still have the semi-active suspension, which is great in both comfort and in sportier driving. You've got more equipment as standard, such as carbon, the bucket seats, the aerodynamic package, etc., and of course, the fantastic lightweight forged wheels. But then it's everything else that they change under the skin. What do we start with? First is a power bump, which I'm glad they did for a special model, which they didn't do on the previous Pro. Standard car is 585 brake horsepower. The Pro comes in at 612 with a quicker 0 to 60 as well, and a much quicker 0 to 100. Then we have the bigger changes. It starts first with aerodynamics. We've got a few extra flicks at the bottom, which you think may not do much, but these little things increase the downforce by 30 kg on the front and 15 kg on the rear. There's also tiny differences, like having a different, slightly larger flick on the side here to help with aero. Little things like this that perhaps you won't notice on first glance. Then we have the difference in cooling, where I think AMG have done the most work and that's betrayed by this all new front end. You compare it to the standard car and the difference is really quite vivid. This is a really aggressive looking front end. I like it. You've got the carbon veins on the front that people have accused AMG of, oh, you're copying Porsche with these slats. Well, AMG have actually been doing it in their cars for years. And it comes into here now because we've got an additional two radiators on the front to help with cooling. And the reason that these are here, these direct air through some new air channels that we have on the front in order to give better brake cooling. Then our brakes, these have been modified as well with a whole new brake disc material, different geometry, and a different setup with the pads in order to make the braking even better, including that cooling element. Then on the rear, our diff not only is more open in terms of cooling, but now also incorporates water cooling, which is great. So we've got more power, more air going to our brakes, more downforce front and rear, more air going into our diff and water cooling in the diff. We've also got the choice of Cup 2 R's as a no cost option if you want it. And you can see this is AMG kind of saying, look, although this might be a daily GT, this is for the customer who occasionally might want to use it on a track like this. And we're gonna experience that in a minute. Now this car is not trying to be an AMG GTR. You need to understand that this is still your daily AMG GT series, just amped up for track use. But what's cool is, mentioning the GTR, they have done a track time in this car, an unofficial one, with their drivers that matches the AMG GTR's time of seven minutes, 11 seconds, or whatever it was, which is hugely impressive for a car that all of us have criticized for being much heavier, et cetera, et cetera, whatever the keyboard warriors have said, the Pro is matching the previous gen's GT3, basically. Now think about that for a minute. That is what, only five seconds behind the previous AMG GTR Pro. Despite the fact that this is a two plus two seater, it maintains all the daily usability. It's got a massive boot. 
it's 4MATIC, that is highly impressive to me. Now, before I head out and I show you what this car is like here at Ascari, I wanna show you the number of ways that you can make this car look. We've got a number of specs here. They all look rather good. Let's check those out first, then we'll head back in the car and drive it in some anger. So guys, we've got a number of really nice specs here. I'll come back to the red one, which I love. This is one that I know a lot of you are gonna be interested in because it's blacked out and it's got some gorgeous, those tech gold wheels in our forged wheel setup just look absolutely gorgeous. Don't they look amazing? And these are significantly lighter than the other options. I heard a figure thrown around something like 11 kg total, which is significant, but these just look so great with the black and the pro with the, the carbon flicks on the front, which then do look different enough to the black, but then meld in nicely as well. That is a good looking specification in my estimation. Some might argue that you lose a bit of the character, but I don't think you do. I think like, look the way the sun is hitting it now. That looks mean. That's a really nice spec. Interior wise, you still have a good choice in the Pro. We've got a number of different ones here. This is quite a simple black with yellow seat belts. We haven't got the rear bench in here because these are our development track cars. I like this. I like this a lot more than I thought I would. I'd go a bit braver in the interior, but then this, this has my heart. I love the new GT in red anyway. Red is not something that I'm, I've typically bought in my car buying life, but this again with the tech gold wheels and the black calipers, this just all works for me. And then I think you can see the revisions on the front end of the Pro that much better on the red, particularly when you look at it from like, from dead on. That's when it really hits you that this is a, a bit of a different animal to the standard car. So that looks great. You look at the car dead on the side as well, thanks to the gold wheels and the black caliper look. It's a strong look. And then on the back, we've got what is signature for the Pro, which is the lovely race badge inherited from the original GTR Pro. This is a totally different car as we've discussed now. But again, bringing along some of that ethos of cooling, aerodynamics, etc. But spec wise, that's very nice. I've got two more to show you. One I absolutely loathe. I hate it. It's one of the rarest GTs, but I hate it. I'm going to show you anyway. And one was the launch spec. Let's go and have a look at those. Now this one is nice. Arctic gray with the pro colored wheels. When I say pro colored, the original GTR Pro came with this shade of Himalaya gray wheels and they brought that back into this. And it's a good look actually with the black calipers and it. This kind of stands out again because of the Arctic Grey. You see a lot more of the Pro Revision, which is why I think they probably chose this for the launch spec car. But again, I like the contrast here. What I don't like is their special edition car, which I just think is awful. Let's go and have a look at it. Ugh. AMG have made some incredible special editions over the years. This ain't it. It's not to my taste. There are some cool things about it, particularly the way that it's been painted on. I'll get onto that in a minute because these aren't stickers. I mean, that is actual paintwork. These stars are actual, I mean, the intricacy of how this was done, how it was masked, how the clear coat was done on top. When you look at it, you'll see these edges, but there is nothing that is smooth as anything. Like it's just normal paintwork. And that is incredible to me. There is a single person who's doing this for them. I shudder to think how much it costs. It's the same with these stars. Every car has the stars in the exact same spot. There's, there's nothing there in terms of you knowing that this was anything but paintwork because it is paint. The car starts as silver, it's then masked up and they do the stars, etc. But again, I say one man does it and it's incredible. There's only 200 of these being made. The SL that they did, which was the motorsport edition as well, sold out. So they made a few more of these there's only five coming to the UK. I, I'm not sure what the price is. I'm sure that they will sell out. For me, I like AMG's old heritage. You know, the Red Pig, the Hammer, the DTM cars. All of that makes a bit more sense to me. The F1 Patrona story is nice. It's great in terms of motorsport. For me personally, it doesn't do it. And I think this is, it's a bit too specific. It, they gotta be a bit more AMG, but should a few of you special people want this, this is potentially still available in some territories, but yeah, 
This is how different you can make even the Pro, which is quite a specific version of the GT, look. So it's totally up to you how you spec it. So guys, we're about to go out. I hate doing these track things with the helmets on. I know it's all a safety thing, but I just look like such an idiot. But you probably think I always look like an idiot, so all par for the course, right? Right, I'm excited about this, driven plenty of GT63. Uh, I want to see if these incremental changes has translated into a car that deserves the word pro, and we're going to find that out right now. So obviously on the racetrack we're going to keep it in race mode, and then we'll play around with manual, etc. as we get going. So guys, very familiar sounding car, which is great because the GT63 sounds so damn good. Raucous, angry, pops and bangs, the whole shebang, it's all still here. Now this is a car that's only really meant to add to the experience of that car, so not surprising at all that it's got an emotional kick, as well as having all the practicality pretty much that that car offers. So I'm trying to understand you know, who is the customer who gets this? And I guess the customer who gets this is someone who enjoys this particular activity as well, because the GT63 is a really capable car. It's such a shame that, you know, we didn't get to experience that in a similar setting, that we could have appreciated that. But I always believe that to be the case, having driven it on the road. You, know, you just know, as a car reviewer, having driven so many things, that there's just something right about this car. The Pro, it's hard for me to <laughs> compare it to that because I've not driven it in the same setting, so we're not going to do that. Instead, what we'll talk about is how capable the Pro is on a track that I've been on quite a few times, actually, here at Ascar. It's a lovely track. It's very challenging. There's a lot of undulations, a lot of sharp turns. It really does, you know, pick apart a car's ability to be dynamic and the pro is doing an incredible job i just i'm amazed at how this version of the gt is just so amazing at hiding its weight i mean the previous gt a good deal lighter than this one this one is that much heavier and of course we're not trying to compare this to the r series of cars but it is certainly meant to be out of the more daily versions of the gt of this generation the most capable one that they've made so far and one that they want you to take on track and to use on track and that's why they've made all of these modifications i love the way that this car is so stable the turning is beautiful thanks to a mixture of not just the rear wheel steer but the feedback you get through the front end is lovely and remember this is a formatic car it's not a pure rear wheel driven car that you know where it's easy to get decent steering feedback um, all that feels great. That semi-active suspension is standard on the Pro and you can feel it keeping the car really quite straight, particularly in the more difficult turnings. To me, the fact that they did a Pro in this daily GT should tell you just how capable this platform is as it stands, as a daily car, and how capable it could potentially be in the future if and when, and I think it's a matter of when, they decide to bring this into the next level where the R's and the Black Series used to exist because I can't see why that's not possible here. We've got a car that should not be as dynamic as it is given the weight, given the format, but it's doing this. It is so fun to drive fast. It's got all the playability of a great sports car. Incredible grip thanks to the formatic system. into manual mode now as well and it does this there's this new thing that they've added into race mode where um, you'll get a sound indicator when it's time for you to uh, shift as opposed to looking down it's actually really quite useful because then you don't need to be looking at any screens or heads-up displays etc etc I love the rumble of this engine man it sounds so good even <laughs> just poodling along. It's just my favourite V8. Angry, angry, angry thing. And of course, a big part of this car's story is the fact that it still maintains that daily ability, right? 
and we can't tell that story today, which is I think I made quite clear to you guys I'm a little bit sad about. But that time will come, and I'll be able to translate that to you guys, what it's like living with one of these, and that will come soon. This is an impressive car on track. And I think my overarching point here is, if you really do want a daily GT that's going to be doing the really impressive track stuff, then you go for the Pro. It's got all the daily usability that you would find in the great GT63 and the 55, the most power on offer at the moment, but it's got the ability to deliver on-track performance the way the others just can't. So guys, an immensely fun car to drive on track. Proof that AMG very much still in the thick of it as far as sports cars are concerned. I just really want to drive it on a normal road and see what it's like as well. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed my first drive here at Ascari in the new GT63 Pro. If you have enjoyed this episode of RBR, then please do join me for the next one, and I'll see you guys next time.